Hi guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. If you're looking for homestyle recipes made ketogenic, then you've come to the right channel. My name is Sarah, and tonight we are going to be making a very homestyle recipe. I'm going to be making chicken and biscuits, or chicken and dumplings, however you want to say it. It is very warm, very comforting, and very homestyle, and it's also very easy. So come along with me, and let's get started. So this recipe we actually made many years ago when we first started our channel and it is such a nice yummy dish and I wanted to give it another viewing so that's what we're doing tonight. You're going to need to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You are also going to need some kind of Dutch oven or large cooking pot because chicken and dumplings is a chicken stew with biscuits on the top and so you want to be able to have something to make your chicken stew in and then be able to put your biscuits on the top. So let's talk about what you're going to need. So you're going to need to melt about a tablespoon of butter into your Dutch oven or your large cooking pot. I have about two stalks of cut up celery. I have a quarter of a chopped onion. I also have about a tablespoon of fresh thyme. You could use dried thyme, but I do like using fresh herbs when I am able to. <clears throat> You're going to need chicken broth or chicken stock. They're fairly similar. We're going to be using about two cups. I have garlic powder and also poultry seasoning. I'm going to be using a very small amount of mixed vegetables. I have peas and carrots here. This is less than a half a cup and over the whole expanse of our chicken stew, it's going to provide very, very little carbs. I have about a tablespoon and a half of almond flour here mixed with a quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. So xanthan gum is a gluten-free baking item that helps thicken foods and it is a low carb product and you need very little of it. If you don't like xanthan gum or you can't find it, you can also use arrowroot powder. We are also going to need a half a cup of heavy cream. When our, uh, we thicken our gravy, we're going to make it a little bit creamy. You're also going to need chicken, of course. I have about two and a half cups here, and this is already cooked and chopped up. You can use any kind of chicken that you would like, breast, thigh, hide and quarter, a rotisserie chicken, or even canned chicken. You are going to need it to be chopped and you're going to need it to be cooked. And I have two and a half cups here. Okay, now I'm going to show you what we are going to need for our biscuit topping. So I have a cup and a half of almond flour here. You're going to need baking powder as your leavener. You're going to need three tablespoons of very cold chopped butter. We're going to be putting in a quarter of a cup of heavy cream, one egg, and a half a cup of shredded cheese. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to start putting our celery and our onion into the bottom of our Dutch oven that has our one tablespoon of butter in it. We're going to let this warm up and soften a bit on a medium to medium high heat in our melted butter. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add my fresh thyme and also my dried seasonings. <clears throat> Once again I'm using garlic powder and I'm also using poultry seasoning. And we're just going to let those cook for just a minute. Mm. 
I'm also going to add some salt and some pepper. So the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to add my almond flour and xanthan gum. And this is going to coat our vegetables and mix with the butter to form a semi-roux in a low-carb way to help thicken the gravy for our chicken stew. To reiterate, this is one and a half tablespoons of almond flour mixed with a quarter of a teaspoon of xanthan gum. We're just going to stir this into our butter vegetable mixture and we're going to cook it for a minute to cook out that floury taste of the almond flour. Okay, we are going to add two cups of our chicken broth now. So I've turned the heat up a little bit and we are just going to allow the chicken broth to come to a low simmer and help incorporate the thickeners that we added with the xanthan gum and the almond flour. Okay, so our sauce is thickening up and it's bubbling as you can see. So I'm going to turn the temperature back down. And now I am going to put in our half a cup of heavy cream. And we're just gonna let that come to a slow simmer and then we'll add our chicken and the rest of our veggies. Okay, we have a rich, beautiful sauce now and I'm going to go ahead and add our chicken and our little bit of mixed vegetables. And in goes our chicken. I'm just gonna stir that around, get our chicken all coated. It looks yummy. You can see those fresh bits of thyme in there and you can smell it too. All right, so I'm going to put this on low and I'm going to cover it while we make our biscuits. Okay, let's make some biscuits. So in my bowl... <laughs> There's one camera man. So in my bowl, I have a cup and a half of almond flour. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to season this a little bit. I like my biscuits or my dumplings to have some flavor and not just be dough. So I'm going to put a little bit of garlic powder and a little bit of poultry seasoning. And we live where it's very damp, so my seasoning will sometimes get a little sticky. So I'm just gonna zhuzh that around with my fork. Okay. I'm also gonna add about a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, now for our leavener, I'm going to be using baking powder and I need about one and a half teaspoons of this. I have a half a teaspoon measure here, so I'm going to do this three times. Then I'm going to use my fork and incorporate that in, just to make sure that our leavening is evenly through our flour, because you don't want any clumps of leavening that can be very unpleasant. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut or incorporate our very cold chunks of butter. So I have three tablespoons here that I have made into little globs of butter 
and the colder the butter is, the better. We're going to work this into our flours until it's a sandy texture. Now when this bakes on top of our chicken stew, it's going to help the biscuits puff up and be buttery, and that's what we're looking for. So I'm just gonna put it all in. So this is what's called a pastry blender. You can use a pastry blender. You can start out using a pasty pastry blender and then move to something else. You can use two forks. You can use your fingers. I've done it all. I like it all. So with a pastry blender, you just get in there and start working the cold butter into the flour. And you're not going to get it completely combined. That's kind of the idea, is you want to leave just a few larger bits of butter because that's what helps your biscuits to puff up. But you do want to get most of it incorporated. And I'll show you the texture when I'm finished. And you kind of have to clean off your pastry blender every so often just because the butter likes to stick to it. And it really does turn into the texture of sand, and that is what you're going for. I mean, almond flour can be a bit sandy on its own anyway, but just make sure that you don't have any super large globs of butter left. We'll show you what this looks like when it's thoroughly worked in. So if you can see the texture it's very sandy and there's little globs of butter in there and that's what you're looking for. So now I'm just going to kind of make a well in the bottom of the bowl. I find this is easiest to put my wet ingredients and then I'll be able to combine them. So the first thing is one egg. And then I just take my quarter cup of heavy cream and just put it right on top of the egg. And then I just kind of whisk them together with my little fork. And then your wet ingredients are automatically combined. And then you can start adding your dry ingredients in. And this is going to form a dough that will make our biscuits that we will drop onto our chicken stew. So there's our dough. And now we are going to put our cheese in. I have about a half a cup of shredded cheese here. You can use any kind that you would like. I'm just going to work that into our dough. And your dough is going to be fairly wet, and that is what we want. That's going to be just fine because we're going to drop it onto our stew. And then these are going to puff up and make wonderful little dumplings or biscuits on top of our stew. Okay, so I am just going to take the biscuit mi mixture that we just made and I'm going to start dropping it onto the top of my stew. And you don't want them to be super close together because you're gonna want them to puff up over the surface of your chicken stew mixture here. And this is a home style recipe, so you do want it to look nice and rustic. So as soon as we get done putting our drop biscuits in. We're gonna put this in the oven uncovered for about 20 to 30 minutes at 350, like so. All right, and then we're gonna put it in the oven and these are gonna puff up and make the top of our chicken and biscuits or chicken and dumplings. So I'll see you in about 30 minutes. Here he goes. Bye-bye, little stew. Don't forget, this is a public service announcement. Your food will be very hot. See how nicely our biscuits are spread out to make the delicious topping. And everything is bubbly and thickened. So you absolutely wanna let this sit for a little while before you dig into it so your biscuits don't fall apart and you don't burn the roof of your mouth. Okay, here it is, our chicken and dumplings, chicken and biscuits, and we are going to have CJ give us a taste. Hi. Hi. All right, we haven't had this in a long time. No, it's been years and years. Yeah. Looks good. And I don't know why, because it's easy. You I don't know forget. why it looks good? No, I don't know why we haven't had it. I forget. Yeah, you do. Well, chicken's really good. 
Ham and honey and biscuit jump. <laughs> It's not super, super hot. Okay. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, this is still hot, but we're trying to get this done so we can eat dinner. Hmm. That's really good. Biscuits are flaky. And, um, yeah, they came out way better than I thought they would. And I don't mean that as a negative, it's just when you see it, you know, it being made, you don't know how it's going to turn out. So, I think it's good, baby. And I think it was easy. I think I'll explain the whole cutting biscuit stuff. I think, you know, that looked like it was easy. It is. And I think people just need to not be afraid of it. That's right. So, good job. Thank you for making it. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you.